Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. Welcome to the week five head-to-head -head battle, the cage match between myself and Paul Sporer from Fangraphs.com. We're going to go through and pick a head-to-head -head battle against one another, but differently than if you play head-to-heads on DraftKings, where you're going to have overlap because you can guys can just pick the same players as one another. There's going to be overlap in your plays. There's going to be, maybe you only have two or three unique players. Well, we're going to draft these kind of like a schoolyard basketball game from when you were kids. Uh, one of us gets first and one. He has given me the first pick overall. Uh, he is going to take second and two, and then we're going to pick one, one, one the rest of the way. We're going to be playing for $200 being donated to charity. I'll tell you the charities just after the bumper video, but thank you guys for being here. Make sure that you drop a like on the video. We got to get at least 700 likes on this video, guys. So like if you watch the video and you're watching to this point, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the notifications bell, and leave me a reply down below telling me which team you like best, because you know what? All of those things cost you absolutely no money and they help out a ton. If you want to give to either of the charities that we're playing for, there's a link down below in the description uh, to donate to mine. It's smizzle.tv slash charity. So let's hit it. He's a legend. Paul, how's it going today, man? It's going really well, Al. We just put the bow on the baseball season. It's time for football. Uh, you're going to dominate me here. Though. I'm you're, not, you're not, though. You're not, it's not on the right footing. I, I got to do this on a baseball field with you at some point, too. But uh, I'm going to take my best shot. I play a lot of fantasy football. I don't write about it anymore. I did mm -hmm. that. Uh, over a decade ago but uh you know I, I i'm still okay so hopefully i can hang here but i'm a little nervous because it's not my it's not my normal battleground i'm a baseball guy see i'm i'm a little nervous too i'm one in three in the cage so far this year but you know look as we do we're gonna just keep trying to do better uh paul why don't you tell everybody where they can find your work sure on twitter at spore that's s-p-o-r-e-r twitch.tv slash spore I'm the uh, fantasy editor over at Fangraphs, uh, fantasy.fangraphs.com or just fangraphs.com. You can navigate through there. Uh, and that about sums it up. I'll be streaming all off season. If you're a baseball fan, I got you all off season, but I also talk about all the other sports as well. we got basketball fans, football fans, even hockey fans. So I'm, I'm a huge sports nerd, have been my entire life. And uh, that's kind of how I live day to day. Great. Guys, definitely give uh, Paul a follow on all the social media sites. He streams on Twitch just like me, and he has a great YouTube channel uh, where you stream a lot of Road to the Show. So if you're a baseball M fan. MLB the Show, yes. MLB um, the Show, yeah. And and going to be branching out there. Maybe a little maybe a little Madden action. They're doing I saw update. some Madden. I saw some yeah. NBA 2K. Yeah, we're, we're turning into a little bit of a three-sport stream. Like I said, I'm a huge baseball guy, but uh, playing some Madden, playing some 2K, I'm going to be putting some Madden on the uh, YouTube channel this this offseason as well, this baseball offseason, I should say. Love to see it. Paul is playing for the ASPCA, so if you guys want to donate, I like I said, there will be a link down below in the chat. I, as always, am playing for No Kid Hungry. We're trying to raise $25,000 before the end of the calendar year uh, to try and help out with you know, food insecure kids all across the nation. One in six kids uh, are basically struggling to know where their next meal is coming from. No Kid Hungry does a great job providing school breakfast, school lunches, and at-home care uh, to kids who are food insecure. So if you want to donate to either charity, there's a link to my Tiltify down below, and there will be a link to the SPCA. As I said, we're playing for $200 uh, this week. And if I don't mention the Smiz Gang Listener League, uh, I would be doing things wrong. $10 entry fee, three max, absolutely no rake. $37,500 prize pool. You got to fill it. Otherwise, they're going to make it smaller next week. Uh, Paul has given me first pick. I think that's I think that's the only thing that, uh, the only nice thing to do. I want to see I don't, where you go. I don't think you're wrong. Uh, God, this is such a weird week. Uh, I thought so, too. I'm glad I'm glad I'm not the only one thinking that. I thought maybe it was just my football and experience. But, yeah, it feels a, a little a little interesting. So I figured, let's see where you go with the first pick. Yeah, this is a really, really, really weird week in terms of uh, daily fantasy. It just, it's, I, I hate to keep saying, because there's so many value plays at running back. And I don't mean like, oh, they're all minimum salary, but like running back's just a position that I think you can get this week without having too much of a problem. True. So... With the first pick overall, I don't think I'm going to have any issue finding guys that I want. So I'm going to go with Devontae Adams here at 8,200. Typically, if I have the first pick, I take the best value off the board. But there's so much value out there that I don't think I need to lock it up. I'll let you take your two. I'll just take the other guys that I think are just fine uh, along with Devontae Adams. So he's my number one pick playing up against Cincinnati. 
Uh, this game could be kind of a shootout situation, a shootout scenario. Um, there, there's a ton of plays on both sides of the ball here. We know what Devontae Adams can do. Tons of volume in that passing game. They, anytime they get to the one-yard line, it's as likely that Devontae Adams is going to catch a one-yard pass or get end zone targets from Aaron Rodgers as they are to run it up the middle with Aaron Jones. So uh, he basically is a wide receiver that once they get inside the five-yard line gets treated like a goal line back. So I'm going to mm -hmm. go with him for the floor of all those targets and catches in the ceiling, and I'll kick it back to you for two. Yeah, absolutely nothing wrong with with Adams there. Definitely somebody that I had high, and and if you had veered from him, I probably would have taken him. Uh, instead, I'm going to go, uh, you know, where where I can feel certainty. And uh, I grew up as a, as a Lions fan. I still am for some stupid reason. Uh, Forty years on this earth, and I haven't made a better decision there. <laughs> but I know the ineptitude of that team time and time again. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they'll go down early and make a comeback but it won't stop Dalvin cook from eating. And so I'm just going to take the easy way out here get my $8,400 Dalvin cook, let him eat against my garbage lions and secure that. I agree with you. There's going to be some secondary running backs that have nice value, but I'll take the big dog off the top in the form of Dalvin cook, easy pick for me. And then I'll take premier wide receiver, Terry McLaurin going to go scary Terry here for 7,400 against new Orleans. I uh, got him at home. Obviously, somebody that folks have really kind of come into their own with over the last couple of years, realizing he's a stud. He's kind of had an every other week thing that I, I don't want to continue because that would mean a 10 point week is coming this week. He's gone 10, 31, 10, 33. Mm -hmm. Don't do 10 again this week, Scary Terry. I need another 30 pack here. So I'm hoping for a big week against New Orleans. So Cook and McLaurin for me. He's got kind of a Brett Saberhagen thing going yep. on here where like on the on the even weeks he goes off, but the odd weeks he doesn't. What was Saberhagen? Was he even or odd? Was his good I years? Can't, I, I'm going to look it up right now. It's but one it's or the other. That that's, that's still your reference. Uh, Always and, and will my be. My frame of reference too. And Jason Collette calls it Saberhagen metrics mm -hmm. when uh, when he drafts somebody going off the every other year thing. So yeah, when when Saberhagen was, was up and down, it was the odd years that were really good for him. That's when he was winning his Cy Youngs and then he'd get injured or be a little ineffective. It was wild how much he could go year on, year off type of deal. And again, I'm really hoping McLaurin breaks that streak this week. I don't really buy into those streaks, but it is weird how much he's kept the 10 30 10 30 uh trend yeah. going right now i mean look there's absolutely nothing it's it's the philosophy in the analytics world that like um streaks you it, there's no such thing as streaks right mm -hmm. because you can't tell when they're going to start and you can't tell when they're going to end mathematically so like a streak doesn't exist i disagree streaks definitely exist they're just not predictive like you exactly. can tell with like this guy has a streak of doing something for this long, but it doesn't mean that that's going to continue or be just the way that it goes. Right. So like, it's the same with clutch, right? Like yeah. there is clutch, but is it predictive in the moment? Or do you always have no. to look back and say this player was clutch? So I totally agree with you there. You can play hot hands. You don't know when it's going to end, but there is something to it. And uh, I think that's been a little uh, mathematically thrown away just because they can't perfectly quantify it. I mean, look, has been clutch is not a wrong thing to say or has been hot recently is mm -hmm. not a, it's not a wrong thing to say. But like, is that predictive of future? No. Uh, That's the tough part. Yep. Yeah. It just kind of it's one of those things. So I'm going to go with another wide receiver in this spot. Uh, another high volume guy. It's a tough matchup. It really is. But I think that the volume is going to persist in the passing game here uh, as Cleveland has to travel to Los Angeles. Dang it. You know, uh, and I'm going to go with Keenan Allen at 6,500. Yeah. I knew seems... you were going right away. Right when you said tough matchup, I yeah. should have guessed it. I should have guessed it because I knew it. I had a gut feeling because I had him in I had him in my number one lineup. I kind of made two lineups that I would like to get here, and he was in my it's number just one. Too cheap. I knew right when. Yep. No, you're right. You're right. 6,500 is a great price for Keenan. It's too cheap for the targets. And we've talked about like the expectation on fantasy points, right? Expected fantasy points per target on DraftKings the last three and a half seasons trailing, you know, this year and the three seasons prior for a player with a, an a dot average depth of target under 10 yards at wide receiver. It's 1.66 fantasy points per target. Essentially it goes up like drastically goes up mm -hmm. for players with deep rate at guys like Terry McLaurin uh, expects like 2.25 or 2.5 points per target. So if he gets 10 targets in a game, you're expecting to score 20 points because those deeper targets, uh, more worthwhile, especially when they come with volume. So Keenan Allen, double-digit targets in 
three of the four games this year. Uh, 13 against Washington in another, well, what was supposed to be a tough matchup. So like 10 points against Las Vegas, kind of his floor. Love the fact that he's still getting those double digit targets. I'm going to plug him in at 6,500 uh, and kick it back to you. Yeah, truly can't go wrong there. Like I said, that was somebody I was angling for. So I'll go for my secondary option in that same area. And that's going to be Deontay Johnson for Pittsburgh. Now, um, this mm -hmm. isn't necessarily going to be uh, what I would consider an easy matchup is that it's kind of more of a middle of the road, uh, leaning a little difficult, but you talk about the, the target volume there, mm -hmm. three weeks of double digit volume for him missed week three. Uh, but I like the 10, 12 and 13 that he has nine catches in each of the last two games that he played, including nine against green Bay this past week. I feel like he was my, my automatic fill in for Keenan Allen. I'm not going to risk that you might go heavy wide receiver and take him. And I'll just go ahead and go with Deontay Johnson. Look, Deontay Johnson is uh, awesome. We were we were heavy on him last week. I kind of really started coming around on him Thursday night, Friday, and into Saturday, like in our Discord, we were talking about, it's like, guys, he's under-projected on every site. People like, like at four different sites had him at like between 11 and 13 fantasy points. Per this is before Chase Claypool was deemed out on. So I was like, there's no possible weird. way. All he does is get 10 plus targets every game that he stays healthy within the game. And I'm not trying exactly. to predict a mid game injury. Exactly. Exactly. And I like, I saw that same thing there and mm -hmm. I was actually in trade talks with somebody to get him that we couldn't get the trade done, but I was like, I hope he's looking at these projections and thinking, oh, I, I should get rid of Deontay Johnson here, but uh, the trade didn't come to fruition, but I agree that he was uh, undervalued there and I'll take him at 6,500 easily. Okay. I, I think I have a plan for the rest of this team. Okay. I don't know if it's a good plan. <laughs> but it's a plan. And to do that, I have to lock one thing in. And I don't normally do this this early. I give myself flexibility at this position as the we, as the draft goes on. But in order to get the team that I want, I'm going to lock up my quarterback spot, which is something I don't normally do in a cage match because there's plenty of quarterbacks. They don't do a whole lot, but like, or they do a lot, but they don't have that much of a gap between the floor and the, exactly. you know, the 10th yeah. best quarterback is not that far off from the best quarterback. But Trey Lance is 5,700 in a game with a really high total. Uh, and like, I'm not expecting a 76 yard touchdown on blown coverage, Debo Samuel and all that sort of thing that kind of bolstered his passing yardage. I don't expect him to be efficient throwing the ball either. Uh, he is not an accomplished thrower at this point. He's kind of learning on the job. Um, too cheap. Now this could bite me, right? If if they start Jimmy Garoppolo in this game, this could definitely bite me. Sure. But this is the way for me to get the rest of the players that I want. So I'm going to lock it in right here. Uh, and I think he's going to play. I don't think they're going to rush uh, Jimmy back. I think that they can get away with playing Trey Lance in this game. Uh, if Jimmy is at all compromised and Jimmy is compromised, you know, there's too many porn stars out there for him to date. Uh, <laughs> and so give Trey Lance a start, please. And let Trey cook. Okay. I think that's, uh, that's, that's perfectly reasonable. They're definitely somebody who was in my quarterback list pretty Hopefully high it doesn't bite at me. that price. If they say, uh, oh yeah, I mean, we're starting, we're starting Jimmy Garoppolo. Then I'm just effed again. For, for the sake of the ASPCA, I hope it bites. To be honest. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm going to go, I'm going to obviously wait on my quarterback. Now I don't have to take my mm -hmm. quarterback till later. Uh, so I'm going to go into the wide receiver pool again. And I really want this guy. So I don't want you to, I don't want you to jump in there and get mm -hmm. him lower dollar guy, 4,800 mm -hmm. LaVisca Chenault uh, with Chark out. Good matchup here. I know the, uh, the, the Titans are trending pretty low. I think it's actually 32nd, the, uh, the OP rank that they have the opponent rank that they have there. So we'll see if he can eat. I know Trevor Lawrence can be up and down. He's not a guarantee, but we started to see a little fireworks in that Thursday night game, uh, Cincinnati against, uh, against Jacksonville. I'm hoping Chanel can get fed here. And for 4,800, I thought he's a nice fit in there uh, as my last wide receiver, unless I go with one in flex. LaVisca had a slow start to the season, but not based on playing time and not based on targets. He had 21 targets through three games. Like, he was being drafted in like the sixth, seventh rounds of drafts. And it's like, look, what did you expect from LaVisca? You expected like, hey, I think you get seven targets a game pretty pretty reasonably most games this year. But people were still disappointed because the way they were deploying him was like these low A dot throws and everything. And then last mm -hmm. week, as you said, against Cincinnati, kind of opened him up a little bit. And we got to see what LaVisca can actually do in this offense. 
uh, with a quarterback like Lawrence, who's going to challenge. He is going to try and throw the ball over 15, 20 air yards a lot, maybe based on him and maybe a little bit also based on what the offense is around him. LaVisca is certainly trending this week and somebody that a lot of people like. I, I like the pick. Tennessee has not been good defensively. Uh, all right, so you have three wide receivers. I think that there's more than a couple wide receivers that I can still go with here. So I want to lock in something that I think is, is quite nice. Don't do me dirty. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think that that's what's happening. But there's a path. You mentioned the big dog that you drafted in, in uh, Cook. I'm going to take the actual big dog. I know you Derrick like Henry. dogs. Do. I'm going with Derrick Henry at 9K. Uh, this is why I needed the Trey Lance fill-in mm -hmm. so that I could Absolutely. get uh, somebody who is targeted way more than Alvin Kamara this year in a complete twist of fates. Like this has been a, a massive plot twist in it Derrick really Henry's has. career. Uh, look, I said I needed to improve floor and ceiling. If I'm going to go with Trey Lance, I have Adams, Keenan Allen, and Derrick Henry, and I think I have a path to an awful lot more volume at all the other spots in this lineup. I kind of like where I'm sitting. The floor doesn't get sturdier, let's be honest, with, <laughs> with, 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 those, with those three with those superstars three, The floor it is a little bit him. thin with Trey Lance. Sure, sure, but he, they're, they're stabilizing it for him. You know the old yes. trope of uh, putting down your coat for someone to walk over the puddle? Mm -hmm. they, they're putting a nice down jacket down for Trey Lance to walk over and hopefully he doesn't fall through because that's that's a mm -hmm. nice three pack there that uh, that you're laying the foundation with so very like gentlemanly like of it. my team yes yes absolutely and they're just hoping Trey can kindly move across with a hot with a nice little score there but again for the ASPCA I hope he falls on his face um <laughs> all right so then I will go I'm gonna go to my second running back here mm -hmm. and I'm a little torn on this one just because I know there's going to be some games where he goes dry. Uh, we haven't seen it yet. I mean, he is getting, you know, double digit carries pretty regularly, uh, getting just a few targets out of the backfield and kind of gets that touchdown a game. I'm gonna go for cream hunt uh, 5,800. Obviously Chubb is, is the number one, but he runs between the twenties and then hunt sneaks on in and, and gets the touchdown. So, so I really only need, the uh, the low double digit touchdowns for sixty something yards a, a, a touchdown and then a few catches for a few yards and I'm golden obviously if he pops off like he did against Chicago ten for eighty one a touchdown seven for seventy four that's the highest high end I'm hoping for a nice solid double digit effort here in the teens range mm -hmm. I would take that and so Kareem Hunt at fifty eight hundred makes sense for me look Kareem Hunt has been the thorn in my side. <laughs> every week this season as like Nick Chubb has been underplayed in tournaments. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to try and punish the field in three X, four X Nick Chubb at low percentages in the millionaire maker. And he just has, he's like, look, 20 carries, very efficient, a hundred yards. And like, then they bring in Kareem Hunt on the yep. two yard. Like, Can you give me a break Stefanski? It, they, they're really doing him dirty. And I, you know, with the prevalence of fantasy football, you know he knows. You know Stefanski he knows. He knows. That he knows. He's like he's smoking the Chubb the, the the Chubb folks with these touchdowns going over to Hunt. It's not like Nick um, Chubb has not been efficient on goal line carries either. Exactly. <laughs> it's he's not inept. He can't. He, it's not like he can't power through the line. They're just like, hey, let's bring in the fresh back yeah. from. It's like one of those things where you know uh, the best reliever isn't the closer. It's like you get it from a real life standpoint. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to bring in the fresh legs mm -hmm. of Hunt, but from a fantasy angle, you're, we're just dying. We're, we're like, are you kidding me when Chubb comes trotting off for Hunt to come in and steal his two-yard touchdown? Yeah, it's it's uh, it, um, just just pain. Just all <laughs> sorts of freaking pain. And I don't like it. Uh, I don't appreciate it. Uh, and I want them to know that I don't. I see they what need, they're doing. They need to know. Yeah, I see what they're doing, and I don't like it. Um, all right, I'm going to go a little different here. Okay. But, like, I guess not. Is this the week? Like this, there's so many running backs, guys. There's so many. Absolutely. But I got to take Uncle Lenny. At 5,200, coming off of a 23 touch game, consistent usage in the passing game. Yep. We don't know if uh, Geo is going to be out or not, but tons of data pointing to uh, running backs that are playing at home and their team favored by over seven points, over a touchdown, project, or sorry, 
uh, produce fantasy points that exceed their fantasy point projected expectation. And Leonard Fournette is 5,200 with all of this volume. Uh, again, another floor guy with touchdown ceiling has not scored any on the year, but should lead the Buccaneers in inside the five carries. If they get a pass interference in the end zone, as much as they throw, that leads to Lenny. Uh, as many times as they project to get into the red zone and into the end zone this year, that or this week, that leads to more usage around the goal line for Lenny. And the volume everywhere else in the field gives him a really great floor. So 5,200. I have 3,800 remaining per position, but I have a tight end and a defense. So I've got plenty of flexibility. I can say for certain that uh, that he was my backup for Kareem Hunt. Uh, Leonard Fournette was so great pick there. I really like what you did. Definitely somebody I was going to go to if you had taken Hunt out from under me. Uh, the Fournette pick looks really nice there. And I'm going to go ahead and go out on the limb, even though it would help you and project first week touchdown. He's getting the touchdown. Okay, I like that. He's, he's getting on the board this week. It's not going to be enough for you. You're still going to lose by a handful of points, but it's <laughs> not going to. It's not going to be Lenny's fault. It's not going to be his fault. All right. So let's see here. Let's go. I, I'll 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 break the tight end bubble here. Uh, nothing too flashy, just just kind of fitting the money nicely here. I'm going to go with Mike Gesicki at 4,200 in that same game there, hoping that he kind of gets going. We've seen the last couple of weeks he started to, to, to do what people are expecting. He had 12 targets in week three for 86 yards, six for 57 in a touchdown last week. So the last two weeks, he's been the Mike Gesicki that people want, even though he started hitting waiver wires in some leagues. Mm -hmm. I like him this week uh, against Tampa Bay. I think he can put up a decent score there. I'm just getting somebody that's kind of solid. I'm not not asking for the world for him. 4,200 for Mike Kosicki. He's my tight end. Look, here's the thing. Miami's been a mess, like in terms of a lot of things, play calling, uh, you don't know who's in charge right now, like a lot of issues there right now in Miami. Mm -hmm. But like, it's not his fault. No. Kosicki's like the last two weeks, 18 targets, 24 targets the last three weeks. Like he's doing what you want a tight end to do for fantasy purposes. And we know how great of an athlete he is. He's just a better athlete than he is a football player. But True. assuming that Will Fuller is now on IR. And so that's more targets that are there to be available, right? They're not vacated because like Will Fuller's kind of been in and out. But like you take those targets out from the last two weeks. Now you insert Gesicki there. Really good floor of targets for him. Yeah, I think so too. So I'm, I'm excited for Gasicki. And like I said, if he did pop up on some waiver wires and shower leaks, happened in one of mine. So I speak from personal experience mm -hmm. there. Go make sure that he's not still out there because he needs to be picked back up. Yeah, go check. You might as well. Always check. You Always. Never know. I mean, if, yeah, <laughs> if nothing else, check the waiver wire. So I don't really need to take a tight end. True. Unless you're going to fill two. Right? Uh, I can Which... assure you I'm not, but <laughs> obviously that could be a smoke screen. Yeah, like, you, you might I'm be devious. bluffing. You might be I'm bluffing. Devious. <laughs> so like i know who i want and i've got a backup at a price point in case you do uh, in case you do try to snag something there uh there's not too many routes that i can go that are remaining so like i need a wide receiver one thing would allow me a little bit more flexibility yeah that would allow me a ton right there so like i could go with the law firm of jacoby and myers <laughs> Who cannot, he has no idea. Can somebody get him a map to let him know where the damn end zone is? Get that guy a map. He can't find it. Like with all those, with the amount of targets and catches he get, he can't find the end zone. Uh, Jamar Chase seems to find the end zone pretty much every week, except against Jacksonville last week. They get Green Bay here. Uh, would be a nice little push and pull here for me. I think with Higgins coming back, the volume might be... I mean, the volume has has been good, but not great. He's thriving off of those four touchdowns. He's looked outstanding. Chase looks like he's going to turn into an absolute alpha, a world beater in this league on the outside. Uh, but I'm not sure that the volume with the way that they want to run that passing game is going to be predictable or predictably high from one week to the next, as opposed to the aforementioned, the law firm, of Jacoby and Myers. 12 targets last week in the absence of James White. 14 targets the week before in the game that James White left early. Uh, while I'm not going to project 12 to 14 targets, I would say that he has a really solid floor of targets. And if you're ever going to find your way and wander into the end zone, it's going to be against the AAA Houston Texans. Exactly. So I'm going to plug in Myers at 56 hundo. 
leaving myself with 9,800 remaining. And I'll see if I can get home. All right. So I got quarterback flex defense. Take my flex here. I'm going for the high upside of a mm -hmm. guy who just popped off, kind of getting on everyone's radar now. Um, unless you're somebody who's in deeper leagues, follows rookies and things like that. Uh, I believe he's a rookie. I don't want to speak out of turn, but uh, I'm actually going to look it up before I totally embarrass myself. I'm fairly <laughs> certain he's a rookie. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take Kadarius Tony. Now, like I said, just had his first big game, nine targets, caught six of them for 78. Mm -hmm. Hoping he can build off of that. He's 4,000 going up against Dallas. Uh, I think that they're a good team to pick on right now. They've, they've had some issues. I know there's a lot of folks going there. I don't know, is, uh, is Shepard back this week? That could obviously cut into this, but I need somebody cheap. I'm going for an upside play here uh, at 4K because of where I'm going uh, with, with everything else here. It, it's, it's a boomer bust type play. I understand that, but I like what he did last week. I like him in general, like Kadarius Tony as a general player overall. So I'm hoping he can parlay that hot week into another solid one. Give me mm -hmm. low double digit points in my flex. Yeah, general player. Uh, salute to him. So you have a defense and a quarterback remaining. Yes. So let me see. So the only thing I could block you on is defense. True. But I and, doubt you're going to. And there's not really. <laughs> no. There's not really that many great defenses out there. Not a lot of things going on in this spot. Uh, if there is a defense that I think could be exploited or exploitable uh, at the low end... Like, I don't want the like Jacksonville going against Tennessee. Tennessee's been really bad, and the possibility that both wide receivers are out, but I have Derrick Henry, so I don't want to, like, piss into the wind here. Um, <laughs> Eagles defense has not done a great job of getting consistent pressure, but they do face off against Sam Darnold. The Washington defense has been atrocious. I know. Versus and expectation, right? I, I picked them up into, like, I have them in, in two of my leagues. I thought they would be good. They were cheap, too. Uh, you know, our, our leagues don't draft defense too heavily, so... I figured, oh, they got a lot of good players. They've been awful. And I, I stuck with them one more week last week against Atlanta. I'm finally mm -hmm. cutting them this week. But because uh, they were bad again against Atlanta for crying out loud. Like, look at the look at the price. Washington was 3,200, 3,900, 26 against Buffalo because they gave them that discount trying to tempt you, right? They're trying to yep. lure you in like the State Farm fishing guy. I hope that's State Farm. <laughs> oh, right? oh, you almost got oh, it. You almost got a dollar there. Yeah. Uh, and then against Atlanta, 3,500. They're 2,300 this week and scoring off against LASIK Jameis. <laughs> right? Like, if there's ever a get-right spot for that team, you would assume that it's this week. And if they can't this week, then nobody should say any word about them the rest of the yeah, season. Yeah, you're not allowed to talk about them ever again. Uh, if they don't do good this week. So at home against famous Jameis, who has shown a propensity in past years to throw picks. I know that they're dogs, but every cheap uh, every cheap defense is going to be a dog uh, yeah. in this spot. Saints will drop back. They're not throwing the ball to uh, as much to Alvin Kamara. They probably will this week and just roast the hell out of me. Uh, but I'm going to go with the Washington football team to try and take one away from you. I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I, mm -hmm. I was down in that range and I did look at them and I said, you know what? I have enough heartache with them in, uh, in my league. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass there, but I am going for a cheaper defense here. And I know that chat was just informing you of who this defense is going to be going up against that quarterback. I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to take the Raiders at 2,900. Uh, they're at home. They're a favorite. Uh, mm -hmm. They're going up against Justin Fields. He showed some things. I watched, uh, obviously, most of that game as a Lions fan, but it was against the Lions. <laughs> the two of us <laughs> and, and nine others could do a few things against the Lions, let's be honest. So here's hoping. I'm not super, super keen on them. You know, watching the Monday night game, they kind of showed that they're not that great of a team. At, at 3-0, and they were a little bit overinflated, I think. But I'll take a shot here against a rookie quarterback on the road and see if I can spike a few points. I'm not too worried about 2,900 just trying to save a few bucks with the Raiders. Now, look, I don't think that I could do a lot of things against the Lions on a football field. I'm 48 years old. <laughs> Even in my prime, these are professional football players. I could probably strike one or two of them out in slow pitch softball. I had three Ks right? last night in high in high arc. And, and you know, 
it's always those those real athletic guys that come in. Like I remember inviting yep. a friend from who played baseball. He's like, I played in college, you know, D three. I'll come out and play. Struck out three times. His yeah. first, he could not get a swing in high right arc until in, the second game. What's that? In high arc? Yeah, yeah. And he, he it's just, totally different. You're not used to a, a ball coming straight down at nope. you. And he couldn't, he couldn't get it. He's like, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. I was like, listen, man, I knew that you were overhyping yourself. You need a game adjustment. So I agree with you. I bet you could strike out several NFL players. I can strike out a lot of the Lions players if we play that, For sure. <laughs> for sure. Jared Goff would corkscrew himself into the ground without a doubt. Now, here's here's the thing for you. This is, has nothing. It's a non sequitur. It has nothing to do with our cage match. Allow me. You guys know that I can't help but go off on tangent. Uh, you're friends with Jeff Erickson from rotowire.com. Yes. Uh, Jeff plays in the same, at the same park that I play at, but not in our league. They're like in a okay. league above us. They're in like the B league. We're in the C plus, uh, you know, who plays on his team with him? Who? Brendan who? Ryan. Really? Yes. That's so sick. Cause like one of the biggest things missing in, in softball is defense. And I'm sure he's uh-huh. picking it like crazy in the middle. Infield. Okay. So I went to go watch one of their games one time. Cause I was going to hang out with Jeff after the game and go get like some, some chicken tendies or something. Right. And mm-hmm. talk about baseball. And like Brendan was there that night playing shortstop for him. He made two plays. I audibly laughed. <laughs> Just like that's not supposed to happen here. Exactly, dude. That, like the 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 guy who fizzled out in in one year of college is the guy who plays shortstop usually, and he makes yeah. some pretty good plays. They make some they good plays. Like man, Brendan that guy's athletic. And then Brendan Ryan came. I like he the ball got hit like really hard. Uh, it was like up the middle and like, nobody's going to get that. Like the, one of those where like the pitcher has to like try and glove it and get out the way. He yeah. not only, and you're on a little league field. So it's a 60 foot basis. He gloves it, spins, fires, and just nails the guy <laughs> at first, like 90 mile an hour softball, yellow one flying across the diamond. Oh. I just went. <laughs> that's so good. That's really, There's really There's no funny. way that's supposed to happen. No, Why don't you go ahead and pick your all. quarterback? Cause I can't stop you. And then I'll finish right, it up uh, with my two. I'm going to take Daniel Jones at 6,000. Um, mm-hmm. He know, was my other put, guy. If I didn't go with. Uh, it's, yeah. So we were going to, we were picking the same two quarterbacks mm-hmm. then. Cause Trey Lance was my guy. We were both going cheap at quarterback. Um, he's up to 6k only 200 over what he's been going. Um, and he puts up a bunch of points. Obviously had a massive week last week. I would love a repeat of that, but I would take something in the low twenties. Uh, and be very happy with it up against Dallas again. So I also have the connection with Tony and maybe I could mm-hmm. uh, feed myself a little bit there. If Jones can go to Tony for something and and really double up there. So easy Daniel Jones to wrap up the ball club. So like you can't say enough about the rushing floor, right? Mm-hmm. So like the rushing attempts lead to rushing yards, which gives you a floor for that quarterback. Rushing touchdowns give you upside, but rushing floor is that yardage before he, you know, like if you look at his per game in terms of rushing yards this year, four games at 888 yards, he's got what, uh, you know, divide that by four. He's got like five and a half points before just you know, locked you know, in. three and a half, sorry, four and a half points before he even throws a pass. Mm-hmm. So the path to him getting over 20 fantasy points so much easier this year. And he only threw one pick, which was a Hail Mary yeah. at half that, you know, he just threw up because he's asked to throw that pit, that that throw up there. I'm so mad that those count against us. I know. I really wish there was a way. Like, we see everything. Why can't we delineate? And yeah. why can't we give uh, Not all interceptions, interceptions are receivers? created. Yeah, not all interceptions. And, like, uh, turnovers on fourth down yeah. should be a turnover for the defense. And they're not. Exactly. I totally and agree. intentional grounding should count as a sack. Yep. And it's not. I'm a thousand percent with you on all those takes. Yeah. The, the, and there's, they seem simple in today. And today is like technological world. I don't know why that can't be coded and properly handled. Yeah. Can we just do the things like just do the seems, things? Seems easy. All seems right. Easy. So there's a couple routes that I can go here. And one of them gives me a lower floor, but it's kind of what I feel I should do in this spot. Okay just based on what's available, right? Like tight end is a high variance position. Yeah, like I could go after more expensive guys, right? I could go after, where where did he go? Where's Schultz? There. Yeah, I was looking at him too. Right, like Schultz has been outstanding. He's at 4,400 in that range. Thomas is out, which is opening up a really good value. Um, You know, Jared Cook against Cleveland, but I don't want two guys going up against Cleveland. That's just suicide. Uh, you took yeah, a sickie who I true. think is extremely good. Fant is too expensive for my team right now. Ricky Seals Jones is 2,500 in the absence of Lance Thomas. 
But like, see, they laughed at my, my Ricky Seals Jones pick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with Dalton Schultz against the Giants, who's been really, really, really good in the past game. Way better than I ever expected him to be. You know, uh, considering that like, you know, he was supposed to be a blocking tight end. But like, he's still playing over half the snaps, getting over half the targets, uh, and getting red zone usage as well, which is going to allow me to lock up my flex. Uh, and I'm hoping, I'm really hoping, that Curtis Samuel's snap count increases. He can't hurt me that much. So like, if Samuel does not play a bunch of snaps or plays, let's say his snap count does not rise and his target count does not rise from last week. Like we're kind of projecting it should. I argued last week, what if he's just like, you know, a poor man's Diami Brown in kind of a joke. Hey, Sporer, thank you for the 14 months on a 12 month streak. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go with Curtis Samuel at the stone minimum for wide receivers. And instead of going the other route with the Washington football team value with Ricky Seals Jones, allowing me to pay up for Dalton Schultz here. Uh, Samuel is that type of guy that can break one play for 60 yards. He previously playing with like Kyle Allen. And then last year with Teddy Bridgewater, two guys who the last two years do not really do well on balls that travel deep, really bad mm -hmm. connection with their, uh, wide receivers on passes that travel over 15 and 20 air yards. Curtis Samuel should not have that issue. Uh, at least this game and Dalton Schultz has been outstanding, really high team totals there. So my team finishes off with Trey Lance. Fingers crossed that he starts this week. I think that he's going to. I'm definitely going on a limb there. Henry, Fournette, Adams, Allen, Meyer, Schultz, Samuel. If he doesn't go, if Trey Lance is basically just going to be like the inside the five guy, I'm kind of screwed. Uh, but I have enough volume to maybe help me out if he can run one in on a gadget play. And you have got a really good team too of Daniel Jones, Dalvin Cook, Kareem Hunt, McLaurin, Johnson, Chenault, Gesicki, Tony, and the Raiders. Guys, go give Paul a follow on Twitch. Go give him a follow on YouTube. Go give him a follow on Twitter. Go check out all his stuff. Paul, thank you very much for joining today. Thanks so much for having me on. This was awesome. Best of luck, and uh, I'll be in the stream. Yeah, go check out both charities down below in the description, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye. He's a legend.